everyone, it's time for another Three Looks One Palette video and today we're going to be using the Linda Hallberg Spectral Palette. So I actually filmed this intro when I was doing my first look with this, so if you see me looking different in the first look it's because I already filmed that intro and in that intro I was saying that I wasn't sure if this was going to be a two or three look video because I have so many palettes I'm trying to get through right now and since this palette only has eight shades I thought maybe I was going to do two, so that is why I might be jumping around a little bit in the intro so when you see me next it's going to be a little bit different so I will also do a review on this palette at the end of the video so if you only want to hear my thoughts on the palette I will leave a timestamp on the screen so you can jump ahead if you don't want to see the looks but let's just get into look number one let's just start off with look number one I guess so I'm gonna start by priming my eyes with my MAC paint pot and soft oak I'm so sorry about the dog but it's just what happens when you have a dog So I remember in my first impression that a lot of these shades, uh, the shimmery shades, are meant to be used as toppers and I really do want to use this kind of blue duochrome again. So what I'm going to do first is I think I'm just going to use Eerie and I'm going to put that all over my lid and then blend it into my crease as well and then on top I'm going to go in with this uh, blue. So I think I'm just going to start off by taking Eerie and I'm going to use a bit of a dense shader brush and just really pack this onto my eyelid. And I'm also going to put it into my crease as well. And I'm going to try to not do a ton of blending here because I want this to be a very vibrant color. And I also want this to be a fairly simple look. So I think I'm going to only do this and then I'm going to probably pop the green shimmer in my inner corner or something like that. Maybe I'll do something different on the lower lash line. I've yet to decide. We'll see what happens when that time comes. So far this is building up really nicely. It does need a couple of layers though, but I mean it seems like it's looking really nice and even and pigmented everywhere. No patchiness or anything. So far I'm very impressed by how this is layering on top of my lid. And I'm just using the edge of this brush to kind of blend out the edges a bit here. So next what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use some uh, glitter glue. I almost went in with my Peely Space, that's not what I'm looking for at all. I'm going to take my uh, Too Faced glitter glue and I'm going to put some of that all over my lid just to make that duochrome really pop. I'm just going to use my fingers to just pat this over here. And then just quickly before that dries, I'm going to go ahead and just pack this blue all over my lid. That is so beautiful. Oh my god. Wow, that layers so nicely on top of this purple. And I'm using a bit of a fluffy brush because I do want to blend this into my crease as well. Man, I feel like that worked exactly how I hoped it would. This is so stunning. Okay, I love this so much. Now, I'm a little bit unsure what I want to do on my lower lashes. If I just want to go in with the purple or what, I kind of also want to use the green on the lower lash line, this one right here. Maybe that's what I'll do. So, I guess I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of eyeshadow primer down on my lower lash line just because pastels just perform better that way. And this has nothing to do with the shadows at all, or the brand is not saying that these shadows are bad by any means. I think so far I'm actually so impressed, especially with the shadows that I used today and the way that they performed. So I'm just putting a pretty thick layer down on my lower lash line here of my MAC Paint Pot. And then I'm going to go into Phantom right here, and I'm going to pack on quite a thick layer of this and get this as pigmented and opaque as I'm able to get this. And then I guess I will go in with the silver in my inner corner maybe. I was going to use the green, but I don't really think I want to use the green after with this color combination, but we'll see what happens after I put this down and see how everything is looking. So I really love this. I think this is looking beautiful. So I'm next just going to take a clean fluffy brush and I'm going to just buff out the edges here. I am majorly digging this look and I actually think I'm going to cheat a little bit and not use anything from this palette in my inner corner because I actually picked up one of the Milani eye toppers uh, at Ulta the other day. This is like a very beautiful kind of turquoise shade. What is this called? Electric Forest. So let me just swatch this on my hand here so we can see how this is looking, but I feel like... Wow. I did not see that coming, so I'm gonna actually pop some of this in my inner corner because I just need to try this. And I'm just gonna take some of this on a brush here. This is my Morphe M149. And I'm gonna put a lot of this in my inner corner. Okay, so this is definitely more of a topper. It's not as opaque as I thought it was going to be. I'm just gently fading this up onto my lid as well. And also just down to my lower lash line a tiny bit here. 
So this is going to be a super simple look. I think this is all I'm going to do. I'm also going to go ahead and put some turquoise in my waterline. So I think I'm going to use this one by Colourpop. Wait, this is not Colourpop. This is LA Girl. Which one should I use? Maybe I should use the Colourpop one. I feel like this one's going to be a bit darker than the fresh one, which is the LA Girl liner. Oh, actually the LA Girl one is a lot darker, so I'm going to go with that one. So I'm going to put this in my waterline, and then I'm going to put some of the Colourpop uh, mascara, if I can find it. Yeah, I'm going to use this one, which is called Kiss and Teal, so I'm going to put both of these on my lower lashes, and then do some liner mascara, and then I will be right back, and I'll probably have on a lipstick too, but we'll see when I get there, so I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I am back and I did put on a lip product and the one that I used is I first put on my Sore My Lip Liner. This is in the shade Stripped and then on top I put on my Wet n Wild Liquid Katsu Shine Lip... What is this called? High Shine? Wait. Mega Last Liquid Katsu High Shine Lipstick. <laughs> this is in the shade Scent Nudes. And my camera turned off, but I was saying this is going to be my completed look. So I am really happy with how this came out. I love how that duochrome layered on top of this purple. I think it's so beautiful. So yeah, I'm actually going to go out today, we're going to go outlet shopping, I'm going to go going with a friend, so hence the nude lipstick, because I've said this before, I don't really wear like crazy colored lipsticks out of the house, like I'll wear like pinks and reds and stuff, but for the most part, I just prefer to wear a nude when I'm out and about and not have to worry about my lipstick being all over my teeth and my face and you know how it goes. So this is going to be look number one, I think this turned out really cute and really pretty and very summery and it goes with my clothes, so that's always nice. So. Yeah, I will see you in a little bit for look number two. I don't know how many looks we're going to be doing, but let's just get into look number two. Okay, it is time for the second look, and I think for today's look, I want to mainly focus on these two colors right here. So this kind of sea foamy green, is that what that even is called? Is it a turquoise? Not sure how to explain that, but <laughs> I also want to use this one, which is called Occult. So I'm first going to start by, I think... What do I want to do first? I guess I'll start by taking this one and putting this in my outer corner. So I'm just going to start by packing this on out here and then I'm also going to blend it into my crease. And I'm going to take this about two thirds of the way in or so. And then I'm going to go in with that other lighter shade in the inner part of my crease. And I had some people say to me that they found this color to be a bit patchy. so. I really want to try it out because I feel like in my first impression I didn't really try it out properly so I want to make sure that I have an opinion on the shade so that I can give a good review on it but so far it's looking like it's laying down very nicely here. It might be shearing out just a tad bit like right on my lid but at least in my crease it's looking nice and pigmented. I'm also going to take this down to my lower lash line on the outer half or so and I kind of want most of these looks to be pretty easy to do. I feel like this palette just kind of calls for more like easy spring summer kind of looks. I don't know, that's just the kind of vibe that I get when I look at this palette. It doesn't make me want to do like a crazy cut crease or really anything like that. It makes me want to do like softer looks. So this is what the shadow is looking like right now. It's looking a little bit patchy. It's not looking the absolute best, I will say that. I don't think it's a bad shadow by any means. It's just not the best that I've ever tried. I think it's fine. I mean, for being the shadow that it is, I'm not really surprised that it's performing this way, but yeah, I can see why some people would say that this is a little bit patchy, because it's definitely not like the most opaque, wonderful matte purple that I've ever tried in my life, you know? Okay, so moving on for the inner part of my crease, I'm gonna go in with Phantom, like I said. And I know usually I do the inner part of my crease first, and I don't know why I decided to do this color last today, I don't know, makes no sense. Just one of those days, you know? So I'm just gonna be packing this on now with my Morphe E36, and I'm gonna meet it up with that purple shade. And I think this shadow is one of my favorite shades in this palette. It is so easy to work with, and so pigmented, and so easy to blend. Oh, I just love this. I'm just going to slightly blend these two in together. I think where I'm going with this is that I'm next going to go into Dim, and I'm going to put that on the inner first, inner, inner first. That's a word, right? I think so. Inner third, maybe, <laughs> of my lower lash line right here. And then afterwards, I'm going to go in and put the silver basically all over my lid. 
probably out on to like here. And I am going to use some glitter glue with that shade because it is very sparkly and very glittery. So let me first go into Dim, which is the kind of corally shimmer. And I'm going to be putting that, like I said, on the first part of my lower lash line here. And I'm doing this first so that I can go in and layer that silver like slightly on top of this coral afterwards instead of layering the coral on top of the silver. So I'm going to do one eye at a time here. I'm first going to go in with my uh, Too Faced Glitter Glue. Too Faced glue. Glitter Glue. That is such a hard word to say. And I'm going to use a small brush to apply this with because I want to be kind of precise with this. So I'm just mapping this out as if I'm doing a half cut crease here. And then just filling in my lid with it as well. And then just taking the same brush and just packing this color all over. And so I can tell that this is definitely very sheer. It's not super opaque, so I kind of wish that I had something underneath here before going in with this. So this is basically a topper shape, is what it looks like. And it's just a bunch of sparkles. I mean, it's beautiful. But I can see looking close up, I don't know how well you can really see it in or on camera, but I can see that I can see my skin through here. So this is for sure a topper shade, which I kind of wish I knew. I mean, I kind of thought it would be, but I also thought it would be opaque enough that I can layer this. And I also see that the purple is looking quite patchy out here, so that's not the best. So I think what I'm going to do before doing anything else is I'm going to go into the blue here, which is called Abstract. And this one is also a topper shade, so I'm going to take that on the same brush. Not going to use any glitter glue, but I am going to just slightly layer this on top of that purple, just to kind of cover up that patchiness. So I mean, this basically solved the problem, but it's not. it wasn't the look that I was going for, you know? But I think that definitely looks a lot better. So I'm just going to take a couple more of those little glitter flakes here and just layer this slightly above this coral. I just realized that this is basically the look that I did in my first impression video too, with the exception of like two shadows, so I'm sorry about that. And I probably should have gone back and looked, but I feel like it's been so long since I did that video. Probably because I've tried out like, I don't know, seven other palettes since then, and I totally forgot what look I did, but... Yeah, this is just where we're at, so this is what this look is going to look like. So that is going to be it for this look. I think I need to finish up the rest of my eyes though, so... Let's see, for my waterline, what do I want to do? I don't want to do the same thing I did in my first impression video, so maybe I'll go in with a metallic blue to kind of go with the uh, blue that I have on my lid. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use Ultraviolet by uh, Urban Decay. Then I'm gonna put on some liner mascara and a lipstick, and I will be right back and show you the completed product. Okay, so this is going to be the completed look. So for lips, I actually picked this up yesterday. It's from Estee Lauder. My friend and I went to the uh, Estee Lauder outlet store here in Vegas and oh my god, like the deals that they had. I got this lipstick, I don't know why it was so cheap, but this was on clearance for like $8. <laughs> so I was like, I need to get that. This is in the shade Crush Blossom. I feel like this might not be available anymore, but I mean, I still wanted to use it because I, you know, I bought it. So that's what's on my lips and I didn't do anything fancy with the rest of my eyes. I just put on some liner mascara and yeah, that is going to be the second look. I like how this turned out, but I feel like I want to do something a little bit not so dark and dramatic in my last look. I want to keep it like very soft and simple for the last one, I think, because that's what I think of when I look at this palette. And I also want to use that blue again because it is so beautiful. I also want to use the green. So yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to end up doing for the last look, but uh, let's just get into it. All right, so for look number three, I definitely want to use some of the shadows in this palette that I didn't use in look number one and look number two. So I definitely want to use this pink. I don't think I used this pink. I'm pretty sure I only used the purples. I want to use the pink. I also want to use this corally shimmer as well as the green shimmer. And I think that means I've used all of the shadows pretty nicely. So I'm going to keep this look pretty simple, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pink shade and I'm going to put that in the inner part of my crease. And then on the outer part of my crease, I'm going to use... Uh, Phantom and actually I think I used that in yesterday's look, but it's fine I mean, I'm gonna have to use it again anyway So let's start off by taking the pink shade which is called unknown and I'm gonna start by just tucking this in my inner corner here and I'm not sure how well this color combination is going to go, but we're just gonna try it and see what happens Mostly I just want to use these shades one more time so that I can make up my mind about them because I definitely have some thoughts about this palette 
So this color is absolutely stunning. I love this. So I'm next going to just use my same brush and I'm going to dip into Phantom right here. And I feel like this look is like very me, especially in the color placements and everything. Because I love doing like a half and half crease. I just think it's so easy and it's so impactful. And it just makes it so much easier to put shadows together that doesn't really like blend together. Like you can't use one of these and then deepen it up with the other, you know what I mean? So it's a good way to get two colors to work together without having to really worry about them getting muddy. And really you can do this with any two colors if you are just careful when you're blending them into each other. Especially if they are like complementary colors, they're going to get a little bit muddy, but as long as you're careful and you just gently pat over, it should be okay. I'm also going to go ahead and put this into my outer corners here. And I'm going to see if I can get this a little bit deeper than it is in the crease by building it up. That is one thing I like about most of these mattes, is that they are very buildable. I will say I had a bit of a problem with the purple one, but the other ones seem to be very nicely buildable. So for my lid, what I want to do is I want to go in with the green on the outer part of my lid here, and then take the corally shade and put that in the inner part. And then, not really sure what I'll do on the lower lash line yet, I'm thinking I kind of want to reverse what I have in my crease, so do the pink on the outside and the kind of turquoise on the inside, but let's do the lid first and see how that looks. So I'm first going to dip into Faint, which is the shimmery green. And I'm going to be putting that on the outer part of my lid here. I'm just going to blend it into that turquoise ever so slightly here. So I feel like those colors actually worked really well together. I was a little bit worried about the green being like too green, but I feel like put together with this matte, it actually kind of mutes down a little bit and it doesn't look as intense. That's actually really pretty. I'm just gonna go ahead and take Dim, which is the corally shimmer. And I'm just going to put that on the rest of my lid here, meeting it up with that green. I'm actually surprised at how well I feel like these colors are working together. And before I do anything else on my lower lash line, I'm gonna first go in with some more of my paint pot. And I think I am going to do what I said. I think I'm going to reverse this. So I'm first gonna start off by taking the pink shadow that I have in my crease here and put that on the outer part of my lower lash line, just for a little something different, you know? And then for the inner part, I'm going to go into Phantom again, which is the shade that I have in the crease up here. And I'm just going to put that on the inner part of my lower lash line. So I think this is going to be it for the shadows. I do want to pop something in my inner corner though, but I don't want to use this palette. So I'm going to take my uh, Lime Crime Highlighting Palette. And I'm going to go in with the shade right here, which is kind of like a peachy duochrome, and I'm just going to pop that right in between here. So this look was very simple. I'm going to put probably some white in my waterline, I think. Is that what I want to do? I think I'm just going to put some white in my waterline, and then I'm going to do some liner mascara, put on some lipstick, and then I'll come back and we can talk a little bit more about this palette, and I'll let you know how I really feel about this. Okay, so this is the completed look. For a lipstick, I used my Colourpop Ultra Blotted Lip in the shade Doozy. I don't really like this formula. I'm not a fan of like the blotted formulas personally because I like a more opaque lip, so I had to build this up quite a bit, but it was the only lipstick that I felt like I had in this exact color, and I feel like this color matches pretty good with the eye look, so that's what I went with. So let's get into my thoughts on this palette now. I would just like to mention the packaging because the packaging on this is absolutely stunning. I love this. I love the sleek kind of... Uh, it's almost like it's like a coated plastic in a way. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it's very, very smooth and silky and soft, and I love that. And it also has a beautiful mirror inside of it, which is great. And I really like the black background. I think that is amazing. So I would say 10 out of 10 for packaging. I think this is beautiful. It's so well done. As for the shadows, I think most of the shadows are really good, honestly. But I think my problem with this palette is that it doesn't have the wow factor that I first thought it was going to have. I think the mattes are good. I did struggle a little bit with this dark purple. It's fine in the crease. It's not the kind of color that you want to pack all over your lid. It's going to get a little bit patchy. And with the pastels, they are really nice in your crease as well. They build up very nicely. These you can actually use all over your lid if you are 
putting them on top of a tacky primer and really packing them on. They're going to look beautiful. Uh, they don't, however, stick to your lower lash line that well. So you're probably going to have to go in with some kind of an eyeshadow primer on your lower lash line to really make those pop, which isn't really a huge deal. I mean, these are pastel shades, so a lot of pastel shades just kind of require that. So I don't really see that as an extra step. I kind of expected to have to do that when I bought this palette, so it's not really something that bothers me. Now, my main issue in this palette is honestly the shimmers. Because I've said before that I'm not really one who works with toppers very well and toppers aren't really my favorites to work with if I'm being honest. So for me, this uh, blue here, as beautiful as it is, I feel like there just aren't really that many things I can do with it. I feel like I need to layer it on top of something else in order for the shadow to really perform its best. And I like having shadows that I don't have to do that with. I, I do think it's a beautiful shadow, but it's just not my preferred kind of shimmer formula. Uh, these two right here are also the same formula. These are the ones that I have on my eyes today. And as you can see, they're really pretty, but I don't feel like they're that special. I mean, I feel like ColourPop has the same kind of shimmer formula. You know what I mean? Like they're just, they're just a good shimmer. They're nothing spectacular. They're not bad. They're just a shimmer. So, I mean, I like them. I think they're okay. This silver, however, is a bit of a miss for me. As beautiful as it is uh, in yesterday's look, which was look number two, I used this all over my lid on top of a cut crease or maybe I didn't even do a cut crease. I used it on top of a glitter glue, and even if I used it on top of a glitter glue, I still had glitter all over my face at the end of the day, and I don't like that. That's just not really my kind of thing. And again, this is also a topper shade because it is just glitter. It doesn't really have any pigment to it. It's just a glitter. And I'm just not really the biggest fan of that. So maybe if you're someone who likes to work with those kind of shadows, you would enjoy this more than I would. But for me, I think this palette is just a bit overpriced. I mean, I paid like, what, $58 for this, $60 for it. I think that is just too much for a palette that is just, in my opinion, good. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's a bad palette. I just think with the price tag, it just doesn't impress me. And I also think that I just went into this palette with super high expectations because I'd heard so many good things about the brand that I was like, I'm going to love this. This is going to be amazing. This is going to be the best thing that I ever tried this year. And it's just good. It's just good. Like, it's a good palette, but I don't think you need to run out and spend $60 on this because I feel like there are other cheaper alternatives that are going to formula-wise be just as good. So if you wanted to get like good pastel shades, I know I compared this to the Creepy Cute palette in the first impression video, so I will link that in the corner for you. But that palette has some beautiful matte pastel -y shades that are sort of similar to the ones in this. And honestly, I think that the Juvia's Place Deuce palette has a lot of similar shadows as well, especially the shimmers. So I think if you were looking for something similar, I would rather pick up both of these palettes and have it be like the same price. And as you can see, the color scheme in these are pretty similar. I honestly even like the silver more than I like the silver in the Linda Hallberg palette. And this green here is very similar to the one I have on my lid. Uh, these two could definitely be mixed to be used as the crease color that I have today. Even alone, they're very similar. And I just feel like there are better options out there. I really don't feel like any of you need this palette unless it's something that you want to invest in and you want to support the brand then i totally understand and i am totally one for supporting brands i have brands that i buy almost everything from even though i don't really necessarily love what they come out with i still want to support the brand because i love them and if that is you for linda i think that is amazing i would love to buy more of her products just to support her brand because honestly i had the best customer service or just the best experience with the brand so far, I think Linda herself is such an amazing person. She is such a sweetheart. I even like had a conversation with her on Instagram and I was kind of blown away that she even like replied to my DM. So I don't know, I just, I had a really good experience with the brand. So it kind of hurts me to say something bad about this palette because it's not a bad palette. It's just not what I thought it would be. So take that with a grain of salt, do what you want with that information. But I think if you want this palette, I don't think you're going to be disappointed, but I also wouldn't go into this thinking that, oh my God, this is going to be the best palette that I bought this year because it probably won't. But I guess I'll just go into some of this video. So if you have this palette, I would love to know what your thoughts are on it because 
I feel like my thoughts might be a little bit unpopular. I don't know. I haven't really watched any other reviews, so I don't know what people say. So I guess that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go watch more reviews and see if other people have the same opinions as me. But yeah, I think that is going to sum up this video. So thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. If you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and I will see you in my next one. Bye.